Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at the time value of money by looking at examples of computing simple interest. So what is interest? The increase in value of a deposit or a loan is called the interest. So if you borrow $500 and a year later you owe $600, the interest would be that $100. We earn interest when we invest our money, but we can also get interest when we borrow money. So terms involving interest, we have the present value or the principal, that's the amount of the loan or the deposit. So in my example before, the $500 would be the present value or the principal. The interest rate, the rate at which the interest accumulates, uh, the interest rates are usually computed annually unless stated otherwise. And in this video, they're only gonna be computed annually. And the other term we wanna know is the future value or amount in the account. That's the amount after a certain length of time after it's accrued interest. A little bit more info, as I mentioned, we're only gonna be looking at simple interest in this video. Simple interest is interest earned on the principal or the, the present value only. So if I invest $500 and I have a simple interest, then I would only earn interest on that $500. It wouldn't kind of cycle through. Sometimes you earn interest every month. So if after a month I had $516, I would still only get interest on the $500. The 16 is irrelevant. Um, some examples of, of different things that use simple interest, student loans usually use simple interest. Some car loans may use simple interest and some mortgages may use simple interest. Um, so you want to be careful for the type of interest when you're making some sort of investment. Okay, so how do we calculate using simple interest? There's actually two ways to calculate with interest and it's depending on what the question's asking, which one we want to use. We can determine the total amount that is the future value or the amount in the account by using future value equals PV, the present value, times one plus R times T, where R is the interest rate and T is the amount of time in years. So this would be the future value. So in my brilliant example from before, 500 was the present value and 600 was the future value. And then I never gave an interest rate or uh, why well, I said a year, so I didn't give the interest rate, but those would be the things that we would plug in based on what I said. So we could figure out the interest rate based on what I said, um, but it's not actually asking us to do that. So this is going to tell us that future value. Or if we're only interested in the interest, then we would use interest equals present value times rate times time. So we want to look at the question and decide what is it actually asking to decide which formula we want to use. Let's look at some examples. Violet invests $6,800 in an account earning 3.5% simple interest. How much money will she have earned in interest after 10 years? So writing down the information, she invests $6,800. So we would say the present value is 6,800. Then the interest rate is 3.5%. Now we want to be really careful here. Anytime we plug in a percent, we don't actually use it in its percent form. We convert it either to a decimal or to a fraction. To convert it to a decimal or a fraction, either way, we divide by 100. Um, for a decimal, that means we move the decimal point two places to the left. So this would become 0 0.035. If you're going to use fraction form, you would take that percent, 3.5, and put it over 100 which we then we don't really like decimals and fractions. So we could say 35 over 1000 You can multiply them both by 10. And what else do we have? We have that the time that she's investing is 10, 10 years that is. So what are we asking for? How much money will she have earned in interest? So see, it says it's asking specifically for interest. So here we want to use the interest formula. Interest equals the present value times rate times time. So we're just going to take these three numbers and multiply them. 6,800 times 0 0.035. And you'll know if you forgot to change your rate to a decimal or a fraction because you'll have a really huge number if you don't do that. And you should be able to, to know that she's not gonna have multiple thousands dollars worth of interest after just 10 years. So when we multiply these all together, we end up with her earning interest of $2,380. So that's the interest that she earned. It doesn't ask us for the future amount, just the interest. And so that's what that would look like. In another example, it looks like I ran out of space here. Um, hopefully you can read through that. Joe College borrows $13,000 in student loans each year. Student loans 
Interest rates are 6.8% in simple interest. How much will he owe at the end of his second year in college? So this one's saying how much will he owe? So that's the, the total amount, including the principal, that, that $13,000. And there's a couple of key things here. It says that he borrows 13,000 each year. So, and we're talking about two years here. So we wanna kind of probably do these separately. So the first year, we're talking about $13,000 is our present value. And the interest rate is 6.8%, which again, we wanna to convert to either a decimal or fraction. So this becomes 0 0.068 if we divide it by 100. And the time, so this is talking about the first year. By the end of the second year, he will have had this $13,000 for two years, right? He borrowed it at the beginning of his freshman year. Now he's at the end of his sophomore year, it's been two years. Okay, so that's one. Then the second year, the present value, he again borrows $13,000. The interest rate is 0 0.068. And this time, if he borrows at the beginning of the year, now it's the end of the year, the time would be one year. So we have to compute these separately, and then what we'll do is we'll add them back together. It is asking for the total amount, so we wanna use the future value formula. Future value equals present value times one plus rate times time. So for year one, the future value will be 13,000 times one plus 0 0.068 times two. And if we use our calculator here, we will get a future value for year one of 14,768. So by the end of his second year, that's how much he's gonna owe from that original $13,000. Now for year two, we're gonna use the same thing. Future value equals a 13,000 dollars he borrowed the, in the second year times one plus 0 0.068 times one because it's only one year this time. And when we do that, we end up with a future value of $13,884. And so now how much does he owe for the two years combined? Well, we wanna add those values. So we're gonna say 14,768 plus 13,884 he's gonna owe a total of $28,652. Okay, two more examples, and I'd like for you to pause the video, try these two, see how you do, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so first we have Anna. Anna invests $2,500 in an account with simple interest, so that sounds like our present value. How many years would she need to invest this money to have over $2,800 in, uh, in the account if the interest rate is 4%? So she wants to have a total of $2,800. That's the future value. And here's our interest rate here, that's R. So just kind of labeling everything, we have a future value of $2,800, a present value of $2,500, an interest rate of 4%, which we're gonna to convert to a decimal by dividing by 100, 0 0.04. We're looking for time, but if we read this carefully, now we can do this one of two ways. We can use the future value, or we could calculate the interest earned and use the interest formula, which will be just slightly less work. So if we look at this, the difference between the present value and the future value would be the interest, and that's gonna be $300, because that would be 2,800 minus 2,500. And that way we can use the formula interest equals present value times rate times time. It's not wrong to use the future value formula, it's just gonna be an extra step. And why do more steps when you don't have to? So now we're gonna plug in our interest, 300 equals 2,500 times our interest rate, 0 0.04, times our time T. Now from here, we wanna clean this up probably, so that's gonna be 300 equals 100 times T, divide both sides by 100, and we see she needs to leave the money in the account for three years, right? She needs to be in there for three years in order for her to have $300 in interest, which would give her a future value of $2,800. Okay, in our last example, Sam now owes $896 on furniture he bought seven years ago. So even though it's current day, this would still be our future value because this isn't at the time when he bought the furniture. And I have a feeling this is gonna come in handy too. He now must start making payments on it. Just now getting around to that, Sam, come on. If the simple interest rate was 12%, how much did the furniture originally cost? Round your answer to the nearest dollar. Okay, so in this one, let's label what we know. We have a future value 
of $896. Um, we have a present value that's unknown. We also don't know the interest, the amount of interest that was accrued, nor does it ask for that. So I don't think we're gonna be using the interest formula here. The interest rate was 12%, which we wanna to convert to a decimal or fraction by dividing by 100, giving us 0.12. And the time was seven years ago when he bought the furniture. So for this one, since we have our future value without our interest, we're gonna use the future value formula. Future value equals present value times one plus rate times time. And the future value is $896. Present value is our unknown. Let's fill in the rest. The interest rate was 12% and the time was seven years. So we wanna clean up what's inside the parentheses following order of operations. We're gonna do that multiplication first. 0.12 times seven is 0 0.84 and then plus one, I don't know why I put an equal sign there, is 1.84, 1 1.84. So now we can isolate our variable by dividing both sides by 1.84. And we end up with a present value. Remember, we're rounding to the nearest um, dollar. So we end up with, I get 486.956522. So 956.522. But because it asks for the nearest dollar, it would be $487. It's going to get bumped up. So he originally bought the furniture for $487. These have been examples of applying simple interest formulas. Thank you for stopping by.